Difta. Hello, uh, welcome to my first assembly of the summer term. I love the summer term. It's brilliant because we can get outside and enjoy that field and enjoy our lovely areas around the school site. It's been brilliant to see you out and about learning, exploring and playing. Um, well done, it's a great start to this week already and you must have got some lovely rest over the holidays because you've been working incredibly hard and getting very, very busy. Um, now, in a moment, we're going to introduce you to someone who will be shortly arriving at Penpole uh, for quite a few visits to help us with some artwork. His name is Greg Humphreys and he is an artist from Cornwall, a local artist, and he's joining us with the help of the Tate St Ives. Uh, and we're very, very grateful to everybody at the Tate St Ives for making this happen. Greg, uh, he'll introduce himself in a moment. Greg is an artist who works with nature and he's worked with lots and lots of people. Actually, he's worked with lots of different schools already to help them create fantastic outdoor objects. Uh, and he's going to be working here at Penpole with each and every one of you uh, to build some fantastic outdoor objects here for our site. It's very very exciting. I know some of you have looked at his work online this week and you had some great questions for him. So we'll go over to Zoom now and say a hello to Greg. Here we go. Good morning. Greg, how are you? Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. The sun's shining still. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's good. A bit worried about everything drying out. I've been planting a lot of trees this winter. Ah. And so, um, so I'm slightly concerned. We've not had rain for a month now. And um, yeah, we're going to have to get out watering, I think, at some point this weekend. Absolutely. It's, it, it is a full month, isn't it? It's been a very long time. Yeah, we keep an eye on these things. Because I am... Um, because I've got a sort of woodlands that I manage as well as doing art based stuff based on the wood that comes out of the woodlands. So I sort of a woodland manager. So I, I've got five woodlands that I manage during the winter time, which is a lot of the work is sort of cutting trees down, letting them regrow, this sort of stuff. But then the wood that comes out of those woodlands, we then use for sculptural projects in the summer. So, um, so it's good, but it means lots of tree planting. So we're planting lots of trees and yeah, God everything's been hitting them this year so it's mm -hmm. tricky so i'm slightly concerned about my little tree babies <laughs> we will keep our fingers crossed for some rain Thank you. very much yes please um, so greg we are very excited because you are going to be joining us here in person not on zoom uh, at Pempole over the next few months where you're going to be working with each child across the school on, on some yes. artwork, which we're very, very excited about. Did you want to tell us maybe a bit about yourself as an artist um, and, and possibly about the project? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, so it's, it's with Tate, so with Tate St Ives, and they've asked me to come in uh, mainly because I deal with outdoor art. That's what I do. I'm an environmental artist. I deal with outdoor art. So I'm very used to delivering outdoor art projects. So one of the things that I really do with my practice is wanting to connect people to nature and to their environment, wherever they live. And, um, and so one of the ways that we wanted to do that, and one of the ways, the best ways that I can think of doing that is not so much giving a sculpture to the school. I could do a sculpture and carve it and all this sort of stuff and give it to the school, but really that won't connect each child, each one of you there, to the nature and to your surroundings. So the best way to do that is to take you out into nature and get you to help produce the artwork. So we're gonna create these big frames that are sort of, yeah, that they are quite big. They're sort of like 10, 12 feet high and, um, and they're gonna be triangular panels. So they look a bit like sails. And then we're gonna ask every single person within the school to help contribute to making these panels and using these panels and these structures these wooden structures that we've created to put the panels in so they're going to be exist in the school grounds at the end hopefully but then hopefully everybody's going to contribute to that whether it's designing it whether it's using them as inspiration for making some smaller scale stuff whatever it might be so we're going to use this as an idea around which we're going to get you out into the school grounds into the local town down on the harbour and get people sketching and drawing and trying to get some things to put on these big canvas panels. That's the idea. Very, very exciting. Thank you. As you were talking there, I popped up some pictures of some work you've done uh, with another school. I think it's Waldingham School, uh, yeah. where you, you created some similar sales there. They are big, aren't they? 
They're big. I mean, they don't seem big. When you say they're sort of like three foot six across mm -hmm. by sort of seven feet tall, you sort of think, okay. Not. But then when you put the frames around the outside of those, they become, because it's triangular, obviously the, um, the uprights have got to be above that. And that's it becomes the uprights become eight feet tall. And then the triangular bit becomes another six inches. So it becomes like nine feet. Tall, and then they become, yeah, they, they get quite big. Um, I think the ones that we've got for you, they're slightly different, they're different dimensions, but yeah, they're essentially quite big things. Yeah, they yeah, are. Absolutely. So we, or the children, in fact, are going to be building something which will last a long time in their yeah. school environment, which is really, really exciting. Um, That's cool. Fab, thank you very much. We, uh, we, some of the children will be looking at, at that work and at some other uh, artwork that you've done previously, uh, and they have some questions for you. Uh, okay, you cool, great. Um, now, one of the questions was, Obviously, you're an artist, as you said, you're an environmental artist. Um, what is it that inspires you most as an artist? Wow, that's really interesting. What I'm really interested in is the natural world and our connection with it and, and exploring that in lots and lots of different ways. So that might be through painting. So I might get inspired by a particular something that I see out in out in the natural world or it might be sort of you know it might be a piece of wood so for me it's working in the woodlands when I work in the woodlands is that a piece of wood will shout to me it'll go use me use me Greg so I'll go and I'll get it and and then we'll try and do something with a piece of wood and I'll try and carve it sculpt it do something like that with it um, and then but it's about trying to um, let it speak its own voice, let, let the natural world speak through the objects that we make. But I think really it's more about getting people into the natural world and letting them be inspired by the natural world as well. So for me, I get a lot of my enjoyment and inspiration from actually people going out into the world, taking people out as a guide almost into the, into the natural world, get them to do art stuff in the natural world, and seeing them be inspired by it, that, that is actually what inspires me more than anything else. That's, that's my inspiration. Fantastic, I love that. that idea. Does that answer the question? I hope that answers the question. Very much. I, I love the idea of the wood speaking to us and, and that interaction with nature is something very real, isn't it? And it's something particularly at the moment um, and with the pressing climate crisis, it's something so, so important and um, so it's lovely, thank you. And, and, Another question from one of our children, a few of our children actually, was how did you become an artist? And I suppose there, how do you start off on that journey? Well, that's a really good question. I, um, <clears throat> I, I've done lots of things before I became an artist. I used to work in the film industry in London, like years ago. And, but I've always, I mean, I remember being at school. I remember being at school and it would be secondary school. And back in the day, we had the first computers. We had Acorn Electron computers mm -hmm. or BBC, micro, the BBC microcomputers, like back in the 1980s, this was. And, and the, we go to a careers officer. And I said, I was really interested in art. And I said, I want to be a painter. And so he turned to his little Acorn Electron computer and he said, oh, the painter. And this little ticker tape thing came out. And it said, ah, oh, we've got the perfect job for you, painter and decorator. Mm -hmm. And it was like, no, that's not what I want to do. I want to, I want to do something else. And so it becomes a journey of finding what inspires you. For me, it's like finding something, the core of what inspires me. Why do I feel the need to make these beautiful objects or do this thing? What, what inspires me by that? And, and then finding a channel through which I can do that. And that is really it. That's how you start. You start by making objects. And if, if you're an artist, you just make objects or you make beautiful objects or or you take people into nature whatever it is or you create sculptures or, but you just do these things and if you've got an artistic practice you're an artist if you make objects you're an artist it's like is that it's a, a people get i think people particularly nowadays is that it's everybody goes you're only an artist if you can earn money by selling objects right selling paintings by selling sculptures that's not what being an artist is being an artist is just making objects that's it if you happen to then sell them and if they happen to earn you money that's a side issue the object of being an artist is paint the pictures make the objects create beautiful things that exist in the world that's what being an artist is 
So it's like, that's how you start being an artist. You create objects. And if you've not got the inspiration to do that, not everybody has. I mean, it's not like suddenly everybody's got this burning drive to paint pictures or something. But if you have, just go ahead and make them. And you're an already an artist. As soon as you put pen to paper or paint to paper or start carving, you're an artist, be an artist and enjoy that. And make it part of being alive. Don't just create it as a career. It's part of being alive. It's part of being human. It's what makes us human. It's creating these objects and doing these things. Thank you. Inspiring stuff. Um, I love it. Um, another, uh, pro probably the last question from our children today, um, was about other artists. Is there someone, okay. an artist or a collective, who inspires you? Oh, yeah, very many of them. There's okay. lots and lots of them. Um, I think there's going to be... I think, <laughs> sorry about that, apologies. Um, so yeah, people that inspire me, I definitely would look at, there's a guy called Andy Goldsworthy. I don't know if you know Andy Goldsworthy's work. Certainly some of our children have explored his uh, in their outdoor art themselves. Fantastic. Yeah. So Andy Goldsworthy is a good guy to look at. He's really inspiring and completely obsessive. And, you know, he's really good. There's another guy called David Nash. So David Nash, contemporary artist living to get today. David Nash created this really inspiring piece of work called Ash Dome, okay, which is basically, so he's an artist who lives in Wales and he's been creating these big sculptures out of wood for many, many years using a chainsaw as a sculpting tool, okay, but really, really lovely stuff. Um, and he created a thing called Ash Dome, which basically about 1980, I think he started this piece of work and he planted, he'd got a piece of land. His dad gave him half an acre of land in a woodland. So he planted ash trees in a ring 30, 30 years ago. And every year he goes back and he sort of shapes them. So they all grow and then they, they're all shaped like this. So that the dome sort of goes around. And then obviously when it's summer, it's like a dome. So the whole thing is like a dome. And so now it's 30 years old. And um, yeah, and that's really inspiring. Um, yes, that's really good. And uh, because it's a, it's a piece of sculptural work mm. that changes with the seasons, that's got its own form. It's formed from natural sort of processes like the sun and the soil and the water. And this sculpture has its own life. It's not just a static piece of, piece of stuff that sits in, a, sits in a room somewhere. So that's really inspiring. Yeah, that that's inspires me. Uh, we will check that out. Thank you very, very much Please indeed. Do. Yeah, yeah, that no, would be really good. Brilliant. Well, we are, as I said, uh, very lucky to be welcoming you to Penpole soon. I believe it's the week after next. Uh, you're going to be starting with reception and year one on two yeah. consecutive days. And then across the following weeks, uh, you'll be working with each of our children in turn, along with some very kind helpers from the Tate St Ives as well. Um, so we will meet you i'm sure we'll ask you even more questions when you join us um please do, please do. thank you so much and we, we're really looking forward to seeing what we can create together um, it'll be amazing it will uh thank you very much um, i'll say bye for now but i'll catch you in a minute uh, so greg okay. thank you very very much indeed we will see you soon brilliant and look forward to seeing you all take care bye, -bye. cheers bye -bye. bye bye so that was greg humphreys greg Thank you ever so much. We look forward to seeing you in just a few weeks. Thank you also again to Tate St Ives for all you are doing in making this happen. If you would like to look at Greg's artwork before he joins us, you can head over to his website now. Uh, I will put the details on the screen here uh, and you can have a look at some of the other fantastic work he has done. Um, it's the weekend, very nearly. You have been working and playing and exploring extremely hard this week, so you need a lovely rest. I hope you have a great time getting outdoors and exploring, uh, and we will see you on Monday morning. Have a lovely time. Bye-bye.